In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and as always, it's great to be with you as we start off this new week, and we love to start off our day always with Mary. Mary has many titles. Mary is the Mother of God. Mary is the Mother of the Church, and Mary is the Mother of each and every one of us. We cry out to Mary and the Hail Holy Queen, invoking Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's uh, dedicate this week and our conversation to Mary. As we start off by praying the prayer that Mary loves most. That prayer, my friends, is the Hail Mary. So together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we'd like to invite to be with us, what a blessing, we'd like to invite our spiritual director to be with us. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has many titles, many titles, among which would be the Holy Spirit is the paraclete. Holy Spirit is also known in the Catechism of the Catholic Church as the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit is also known in the sequence that we pray in Pentecost, as the Holy Spirit is also known as the sweet guest of our souls. The Holy Spirit is also known as our counselor. He will give us good advice. He's also known as our consoler in the midst of the desolations that we all have to go through. Holy Spirit is there to console us and to give us support and strength. Holy Spirit is also known as the interior master. And he's also the sanctifier. We want to grow in holiness. He's the one that will help us to arrive at our own, own sanctification. So that being the case, let's turn to the Holy Spirit and beg the Holy Spirit to, to be with us, to guide us, to strengthen us, to encourage us. As we say, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lady of Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Faustina Maria Kowalska, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Avila, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We. 
Very good, my friends. Uh, we always start off by praying together because the family that prays together stays together. And we are a family. This is our perseverance prayer family. But then we move to our my prayer intentions. We'd like to pray for all of you by placing you all on the altar in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We should never forget the power of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Indeed, there's no greater prayer in the world than the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Mass is the opus Dei par excellence. It's the true work of God. Where Jesus offers himself to God the Father. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. For the salvation of the world at large. So let's... pray for each other, and I'd like to place these intentions on the altar in my Mass. First would be I'd like to pray in a special way for your Lent. That is, we move closer and closer to Holy Week. That you would live out this Lent with great generosity of soul. St. Ignatius would use the word magnanimity, magna anima, which means a, a generous, a, a big soul. Magna means great anima, soul. Then my next intention would be to pray in a special way for your families. True that our families under are under attack in many different ways. One of the keys to saving our families is you have to make a concerted effort to pray for your family. But you also have to pray with your family. How true it is, the family that prays together stays together. Make sure that, especially in these days of Lent, leading up to Holy Week and Easter, that you have time to pray the rosary every day as a family. Find time. You can pray the rosary with me online every day. I so much believe that the family that prays together stays together. That especially refers to the prayer of the Most Holy Rosary. Finally, I'd like to invite you to pray with me, placing this on the altar of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. For the situation in the Ukraine, that this past week on Friday, in which Pope Francis made a consecration of Ukraine and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, what a beautiful gesture, that through Mary's prayers, something very special will happen between these two countries. There's still much tension. Mary is known as the Queen of Peace. And she said at Fatima that in the end, in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. So let's, uh, let's pray for the situation in the Ukraine. 
that there will be peace. This peace will be brought on by our very fervent prayers. So my friends, those will be our prayers in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So I'd like to enter into the readings for the day with, with all of you. So today we have Prophet Isaiah chapter 65. The responsorial psalm will be Psalm 30. Then we jump to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4. A brief overall summary would be Isaiah invites us to rejoice in the Lord. The antiphon for the psalm is, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A, an exhortation, invitation to praise God, which is very much related to principle and foundation because we're all called to praise God. In John chapter 4, we're going to read and meditate upon one of the signs of Jesus. The Gospel of St. John is known also as the Gospel of the Signs. The seven signs. And these signs in Johannine biblical interpretation would be miracles. That Jesus carries out seven miracles powerful miracles in the Gospel of St. John. So, let's enter into the readings for the day. Remember the words of Jesus to the devil. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Okay, the first reading today from Isaiah chapter 65 is in a certain sense a um, sequel or a follow-up of, of yesterday. I'll explain. The fourth Sunday of Lent and the third Sunday of Advent have this common thread that the priest can come out with a liturgical color you only see two times during the course of the liturgical year. It's not obligatory, but it's, it's recommended. If you went to Mass yesterday, I had the Mass at 10 o'clock in Spanish. I came out with the liturgical chasuble with the color pink. So the fourth Sunday of Lent and the third Sunday of Advent are the two days in the year in which the priest can wear pink. So yes, it's called La, La, La Terre Sunday, which means Sunday of joy. Third Sunday of Advent will be Gaudete, which means to rejoice. And this joy that the church recommends for us is for this reason. Fourth Sunday of Lent, we're getting close to the Paschal Mystery. In two weeks, my friends, it will be Holy Week. 
And in three weeks, it will be Easter, and then Easter week in the Easter season. So even though we are approaching the passion, suffering, and death of Jesus Christ, in which we're invited to participate in his Paschal mystery, even though these days are days of pain and sorrow, still there's, in the depths of our hearts, there's joy. Because Jesus will carry out the mystery of our salvation. That because of what he underwent for us, his passion, death on the cross on Good Friday, and his rising from the dead on the third day, we, the gates of heaven, are wide open. And we can be saved. And that's the purpose of our life. We're here to be saved. We're here to get to heaven. So that's a source of infinite joy. We are all called to be joyful. I call it the three H's, the universal call, rather, yeah, the, re, the uni, three H's, the universal call to holiness, the universal call to happiness, and the universal call to heaven, the three H's. The universal call to holiness, we're called to become saints. The universal call to happiness, enter into the joy of my Lord. And the universal call to heaven, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Jesus says, so that where I am, you also may be. <laughs> so the reading of Isaiah today focuses a lot upon joy and rejoicing, which is repeated several times in this short reading. Now, here's the big question. Here's the $100 question. If it is true that we are all called to joy, if it is true that we're all called to joy, we're all called to be happy, then why is it why is it that so many people in the world do not express joy in any way or another. Why do you have so many people walking around glum, gloomy, and gruesome, and sad, and depressed, and discouraged? and living with almost a total hopelessness. Why? They indeed want to experience happiness and joy, but they're looking for it in a wrong, they're looking for it in a wrong place, in a wrong manner. We can only experience true joy, my friends, in an encounter with God. God is the ultimate source of our joy. So, I would suggest three ways that we can 
try to acquire joy. But before giving me these practical suggestions, I'll, I'll make this one last comment. Many, many people, they confuse two things. Pleasure and joy. That's right. Pleasure and joy. They're two different things. Pleasure depends upon You can buy pleasure, external stimuli of the senses, an ephemeral, titillating, passing, empty, sensual delight, you might say. Pleasure comes and goes. kind of like cotton candy or foam on the top of a beer. It disappears quickly. Whereas joy is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit that we experience in the very depths of our soul. And even in the midst of suffering, we can experience a deep joy. Because this joy is related to union with God. God is our anchor. He's our support. He's our strength. So I'm going to offer you three keys to open up the gateway to, to true joy in your life. The first and this is one of the primary this is one of the primary practices of the season of Lent. However, it should characterize it should characterize our whole existence. And it's this that of prayer. He who prays well, lives well. He who lives well, dies well. He who dies well, all is well. St. Augustine. He who prays well, lives well. He who lives well, dies well. He who dies well, all is well. The great St. Augustine. St. Augustine who experienced a life of sin and pleasure until he was 31. would later write in his classic called The Confessions, O Lord, you have made our hearts for thee. And our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. O Lord, you have made our hearts for thee. Our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. The restless heart. The heart cannot find true happiness until it is found in God. And that comes about, my friends, through prayer. So if you want to experience this joy that the prophet Isaiah speaks about and that we celebrated yesterday on Laetare Sunday, try to dedicate more time to prayer. And beg the Lord that he will fill you with joy. One of the psalms that I, psalm verse they love most is, is this one. Look to the Lord and be radiant with joy. Look to the Lord and be radiant with joy.
Bible says they saw the Lord and they rejoiced. And Our Lady teaches us the importance of joy in her Magnificat. Mary says, My soul does magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You know, as parents, it's you have an obligation to be joyful for your children. A sad mother is going to have a sad household. How true. You set the emotional climate or environment, usually the mother in the house. So beg that you would be a woman of prayer and that you would spread joy in your home. Otherwise, your children will seek fa false joys outside your home. Drugs, sex, pleasure, gang activity. Those are all false joys. The second means by which we can experience true joy is the following. This is a follow-up of the Gospel of yesterday. And it would be lit to live out the parable of the prodigal son. The parable of the prodigal son, my friends, is also known as the parable of the merciful father. I repeat, the parable of the prodigal son is also known as the parable of the merciful father. How is this related to joy? Well, the prodigal son experienced deep sadness when he left the home of the father. When he returned home through repentance, then he experienced that joy of spirit. Concretely, how might we relate this to us? How might we relate this to us? In this manner, by making a good sacramental confession, you will experience true joy. Over the past two and a half weeks in our spiritual exercises program that we have at St. Peter Chanel, St. John the Baptist in Baldwin Park, and St. Therese in Alhambra, we've been working on general confessions. And over the past two and a half weeks, I was calculating this morning, we had probably close to 500 general confessions. That's huge. 500 people going deep into their hearts, examining their consciences, and making the best confessions in their lives. Wow, was there a lot of joy over the past couple of weeks. Because these people in our programs were able to experience the joy of the merciful heart of Jesus Christ. The joy of love and forgiveness and mercy. So speaking about joy, my friends, that which squelches or squashes or elim eliminates joy from our hearts is the reality of sin. Many people and many Catholics are walking through life 
or sadness because they're loaded down with sin. Being loaded down with sin as well as guilt is a great source of sadness. I don't know if it, you, any of you have ever seen the film The Mission with Robert De Niro taking place in South America. There's a brother that killed his brother. And the Jesuit priest gave him for penance when he went to confession to carry a huge ball with a chain of paraphernalia of his possessions, where every one he'd have to carry it. You have a scene where he's climbing up this this uh, steep hill, and the brother and the priest recognize he's done enough penance. They get a knife and they cut the rope of that ball of paraphernalia that he was carrying, and it comes cascading down the hill. In a certain sense, that's what happened to us once we make a good confession. We cut ourselves loose of this baggage of sin which is laying, weighing us down. Sin weighs us down. God's love and mercy buoys us up. As the prophet says, we, we will be lifted up on eagle's wings and we'll fly. We'll no longer walk or run, but we'll fly in eagle's wings once we're forgiven of our sins. My friends, if you're just tuning in, I'm commenting upon the first reading of Isaiah related to yesterday, which Isaiah invites us to follow with the theme of joy, rejoicing in the Lord. Yesterday was the fourth Sunday of Leitade, which means it means joy, rejoicing. And I'm giving you three ways in which we can experience joy right now as we draw close to our Paschal mystery in Holy Week, which will be in 13 days. So I'm mentioning three ways in which we can experience joy. And the third is the following. By means of a story in the life of two saints. John Bosco always in, encouraged his young people to be joyful. That's right, he wanted them to experience joy, to be joyful. And he took under his wings this boy, his name was Dominic Savio. Dominic Savio said to John Bosch, who you are the claw, I am the cloth, and you are the tailor. Make me a saint. And it happened. Dominic Savio died, he was only 14 years old. In 11 months, almost 15. He died in the order of sanctity. After he died, he appeared to St. John Bosco in glory, in glory, bathed in light. And he was bantering with John Bosco. He asked John Bosco, what do you think gave me the greatest joy when I was living? Bosco said, well, probably your deep prayer life. Yeah, but something else. 
say, well, maybe your life of penance, that you were able to conquer your passions by your penance. Yes, but something else. Well, maybe your positive influence on the young people. You will bring young people to go to confession. Yeah, but something else. So John Bosco said, I don't know, Dominic, what was that which brought you most pleasure when you were on earth? And Dominic Savio said, It was my great love for Mary. My great love for Mary. Go and spread devotion to Mary. Our Lady, help of Christians. And that's my message to all of you is Mary, love for Mary, devotion to Mary, consecration to Mary, praying to Mary, spreading devotion to Mary, will undoubtedly be an infinite source of overflowing joy in your life. We even have, on Mondays, we pray the joyful mysteries. So, my friends, may the words that we read in the letter of St. Paul to the, not the Filipinos, but the Philippians, may these words encourage us to grow in joy. And those words are, Rejoice in the Lord. I say it again, Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. I say it again, Rejoice in the Lord. The responsorial psalm, my friends, the antiphon is, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I have praised you, Lord, if you have rescued me. Call to mind when St. Peter was imprisoned for preaching the word of God, for proclaim, proclaiming that Jesus Christ was the Lord, God, and Savior. He was thrown in jail. God sent his angel to open up the gates of the jail cell as well as the gates entering into the city. So Peter was rescued from jail and there was great rejoicing. I think we can interpret this in a spiritual way, talking about the sacrament of confession, talking about the sacrament of confession. is if we are living in sin, my friends, we are, we are slaves. We're slaves of our own sinful passions. But once we go to confession, we are liberated. We're freed. As the prophet Isaiah points out, he's come to set the captives free. <clears throat> Another interpretation of this might be the following. It is true, living in society and living in family, we hurt each other and they hurt us. A real form of inner slavery is when we've been hurt by someone, when we've been hurt by someone, then we can either cling to that hurt or we can forgive. It's either one it's either one or the other. I repeat, we can either cling to that hurt 
or we can relinquish it and forgive. As the English poet Alexander Pope expressed it, To err is human, to forgive is divine. I like that. Don't you? To err is human means to mistake. To err is human, but to forgive is divine. How good God is. How good God is. So that's the antiphon for the responsorial psalm. So let's move into the gospel, which is always very rich, the gospel. When we proclaim the gospel, this liturgical gesture, we say, the Lord be with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And then we take our finger, our thumb. We mark our forehead, our lips, and our heart. Why do we do that? Well, we do that because we want the Word of God which which the psalm says is a light and a lamp light as well as a lamp a light and a lantern for our steps we want the word of god to take root in our mind our lips but especially in our hearts so once again i invite you to to utilize a biblical methodology or method of the five steps that I've that I have uh, suggested: read, memorize the basic content. What is the general meaning of the passage? What is the meaning for me? And then finally, the personal application. How can I apply this to myself? Read, memorize, understand, personal understanding, practical application. Five steps. You can utilize that. So we encounter the very center of the Bible and the very center of the Bible are the Gospels. And the focal point of the Gospel is the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. St. Ignatius says we, sh we should beg for the grace of intimate knowledge of Jesus that we love him more ardently and we follow him more closely. So we see Jesus today, he's, he's leaving Samaria and he's heading toward Galilee. He goes on to point out that a prophet is welcome everywhere except in his own town. Which we saw earlier in the gospel, Jesus goes back to Nazareth and he preaches and they want to, they want to push him off the brow of the hill. Now, I always like to read the gospel and try to apply it to ourselves. And one point I'd like to make is this. Is, even though this is painful, but it's true. Very often happens that where, where we are most persecuted is sometimes in our own family. That most of you have been with me over the past maybe a couple years, maybe even more if you've done the, this spiritual exercise with me. 
because our online family is even more than two years, our daily perseverance conversation. So given that you're part of our family, I'm always motivating you to grow in holiness through a deeper prayer life, inviting you to invite others to become part of our perseverance family. Try to share our conversation every day with a friend or two. But you, it might be your husband or your adult son or daughter that's not on the same wavelength as you are. And you like them to be with you. But they're not, they're not ready for that yet. Worse yet, is they start to persecute you. Start to persecute you, that's right. And sometimes they're, they utter sarcastic remarks calling you the saint. Here comes the saint. In other words, these jabs. And they're painful. Very painful. And some people of weaker caliber will sometimes capitulate, collapse, and even give up their prayer, pray less because they want to. They don't want to keep undergoing this persecution. But don't forget, Jesus says that a prophet is well received except in his own town, you might even say in his own family. Either we are people pleasers or God pleasers. I repeat, either we are people pleasers or we're God pleasers. Once we in, enter into Holy Week, we'll talk about the characters of the Passion. One is the person of Pontius Pilate. Pilate, Pontius Pilate, was basically a people pleaser. He didn't want to disturb the crowds. He wanted to please Caesar. So he purposely had our Lord condemned to death, knowing that Jesus was innocent. His wife Claudia had a dream and said, look, this is an innocent man, let him go. So that's one point I'd like to lay in your hearts, is not to become discouraged when you feel persecuted. Because as Jesus says in the Gospel today, prophet has no honor in his native place. So now Jesus, he, he leaves Samaria and he enters into Galilee. Galilee. Later, Jesus will be called the, the Nazarene as well as the Galilean because he preached a lot in Galilee. Jesus the Galilean. And it says that they welcomed him. Let's, uh, let's focus uh, a short time on that word, welcoming Jesus Christ. Can we welcome him? The Galileans in the gospel today welcome Jesus. How about us? Can we or should we welcome Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to welcome our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How? Well, every time we come together in our Perseverance family, we're 
we're welcoming Jesus and the Holy Family to be with us in this perseverance family. We give Jesus the warm welcome. Second is every time we pray with purity of heart, humility and sincerity, prayer is welcoming Christ into your life. So the more and the better we pray, the more we give the Lord a warm welcome into our lives. But also, and this is very important, every time we go to Mass, we listen to the Word of God and we participate fully, actively, and consciously in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And most especially, we receive Jesus Christ in Holy Communion, into our hearts. In Holy Communion. We indeed are welcoming Christ as the Galileans welcome Christ. Now, the Gospel today centers on one of the seven miracles in the Gospel of St. John. And we have this royal official who approaches Jesus with a very serious problem. Very serious problem, which is causing this royal official great consternation as well as great suffering. And it's his, his child is very, very sick. His child is very, very sick. The child has arrived at the point where he's almost dying. So he approaches Jesus and says, Sir, come down before my child dies. Come down before my child dies. So, Jesus says very clearly to the man these few words. He says, you may go, you may go, and Jesus says, your son will live. Just those few words. You will go, your son will live. Now, one of the key words in the gospel today is the following. You can go, your son will live. What follows is, it says, he believed what Jesus said to him and left. He believed. He believed. That's all we have. He asked Jesus to heal his son. Jesus says, your son will live. He believes. Now, when the man is heading home, the man had slaves. They, they meet their master. 
even before he arrives home and he's they say they say that his his boy will live in other words the fastly declining health of this boy was his health was restored and he asks the slaves well when did this happen they say, well, it happened about one o'clock in the afternoon. And the man was recalling the encounter he had with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In that Jesus had said to the man, the father of this child, Go your way, your son will live. And that was, it was at one o'clock. So the same time that Jesus said the child will live, he started to get better. So my friends, there's, it's a beautiful gospel, beautiful gospel. Maybe we have in our families our children, maybe our husband, maybe our relatives, maybe, maybe our young adults. Maybe they are very sick spiritually. They might even be spiritually dead. Don't become discouraged. Don't become discouraged. But like the royal official of the gospel, bring these people you love to Jesus Christ. And ask Jesus, who is the divine physician. He's just as powerful today as he was 2,000 years ago. Even though you don't see him, you believe in him. So do I. Of course, our belief, our, our faith can be stronger. We should be saying, Lord, I believe, but strengthen my faith. Bring these loved ones to Christ and to his mother. And say, Lord, please heal them. And Jesus, through Mary, who's known as the health of the sick, will indeed heal your loved ones, even bring some of your loved ones from death to life. I'd like to give you my priestly blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.